Hi, everyone. Um, this video just goes over the group evaluation report, which is the final assignment. So as a group, working with your partner or partners, construct a two page or so 1.15 space report on your construct. So um, if you end up doing double space, it will be three or four pages. Be sure to cover the following aspect, a construct definition. So in a few sentences, define the construct and how it fits into the overall evaluation. And you might have done a little bit of this work already. A description of the instrument, results of your analysis, recommendations, and a few sentences. This would be at the end, just detailing who contributed what. So we can make sure everyone is contributing um and then clean it up because we are actually going i'm going to compile this and give it to um the people running the program so um i have an example i'm going to go through i'm going to go back and forth between this and the example all right so this is an example from last year this is um a fairly extensive i'll have you know so if you're feeling a little overwhelmed um by this example, you don't have to be quite as perfectionist, but it's also a very good example. So notice that they have the title of their, they, they use a template for report, so it looks really nice. They have the title of their construct, right? They make this argument around this important component of retaining students. They were um, evaluating a class of freshman seminar kind of collaboration. Um, so then they define the construct here. The community building category is one element of the student survey. It aims to determine whether the pathway program is producing the desired results and promoting the formation of community among students within the same cohort, right? So they're, de they're defining the construct. Um, and then they talk a little bit about how the questions were created. They were designed to gauge how interacting with cohort members may have led to building relationships, what activities help in connecting with other members, how these relations are viewed by students. So in some ways here, they're divine, defining the facets of the construct. And um, this is important to think of, not just in terms of your report, but as you move forward in your own study, anything that you use, any idea that you use, any theory that you use is going to have various facets, various elements. So thinking about that. So then description of the instrument and notice the headings. You'll need to have headings. It shouldn't just be like a, a flow. Um, as one part of seven sections, community building survey questions consisted of four Likert scale questions ranging from frequently. So then how many questions then that it is um, like, what's the Likert scale, right? Frequently, somewhat frequently, occasionally, rarely, et cetera, right? And then they had their open-ended questions. They talk about what the Likert questions aim to do to gauge whether the group work and member support helped members academically and increase their knowledge. And then they gave a couple of examples. Students in my court, cohort support one another ac academically, et cetera. And then they talk a little bit more about their open-ended questions. Now, you only need to give one or two examples of each item. You don't need to give all of them. The next section is results. So um, you don't need to see here, they repeat that they have frequently to rarely, et cetera. Um, you don't necessarily need to repeat that, but you're welcome to. Um, let's see. So they looked, they were comparing cohort one and cohort two. You might end up comparing male to female. You might end up comparing um, first generation and non first generation. So you would want to say that. All right. Um, now they say that um, for each question, an approximate 0.5 difference in mean is substantial. Now, um, I'm not sure exactly what they mean by that because probably what's substantial is one standard deviation difference, right? So I know all of you are very into standard deviation. So that's one way actually to talk about effect size is if one, co one group is one standard deviation different than another group or even half a standard deviation different is pretty decent. Um, they do also, and so you can see they've got a very nice figure here comparing cohort one and cohort two. Um, 
Now, since they say Q1 to Q4, I actually would say that they probably should have um, had a chart with the questions. If they're going to if they're going to divide the questions up like this, they should probably have a chart with the questions. Standard deviation reveals that cohort two also yielded a higher spread of responses. Oh, hooray! They use standard deviation. I think that's really interesting, right? Um, and so they talk a little bit about different things that they saw in the chart. So that's really important that you don't just give a chart and talk about the responses, but you talk about what you found and what it means. All right. So they said in both cohorts, this data implies that the students have varied responses regarding the frequency in which discussion occurs among one another in class. So they give another chart and these charts should actually probably have labels so that if I just look at the chart, I know what's going on. So this would be figure two and it would be labeled with what's going on here. And this is funny. They have the standard deviation in their chart, but I love it. Okay. Um, then they talk a little bit about their open-ended questions. What do you wish to change about being a member of the cohort, right? And they've got um, some, some replies here. Now, in this chart, uh, they may want to do something a little bit different with a chart, right? Because we don't actually see the response. And um, it would be good if we could see the entire response. Um, so maybe they could work a little bit on the way the chart looks. But I do like their use of the, the graph where they, they split out cohort one and cohort two. I really like that. And then they also talk about it, right? They talk about what's going on in the chart. Um, so for instance, right above it, they say the remaining categories reveal that cohort one would prefer change and more coordination between classes, while cohort two would prefer the instructor providing more feedback. Um, and you can see again, as they're analyzing their open-ended responses, in terms of aspects that students like about being part of a cohort, Students astoundingly chose community building aspects as a positive element of being in a cohort, right? And then they list the items. Now they had three open-ended questions that they, they coded all of them. But um, you can maybe just code one of your open-ended questions if you have more than one. Then they provide their recommendations. You can see here um, some recommendations uh, accordingly. So starting down towards the middle of the paragraph, it is recommended that the pathway program continue with a cohort structure. However, it is important to consider changes in structure. And then they give their recommendations very clearly, right? One, registering students to a cohort that matches their major. Two, ensuring faculty communicate to coordinate cross-learning opportunities where possible. Etc. So if I toggle back to the assignment, you can see where they describe the instrument, right? They looked at um, Likert, how many open ended, etc. Um, the range of the Likert scale, and they gave some example questions. They gave their figures. They interpreted the figure, right? So they discussed the means, higher and lower rated items standard deviation, and they talked about what's going on, and they gave their open-ended questions, right? And then they gave their recommendations. Um, what we haven't gone over is a few sentences about who contributed what, but that's kind of separate from the general report. So there you go. That's basically what a report ends up being. It's kind of you know, I mean, because the format is pretty clear and simple, like it's just like, here's the construct, here's what the Likert scale was, etc. It doesn't take quite as long to write as a literature review. I know you've been writing a lot of literature review. It can be, it can flow a little bit more easily and it can be kind of fun to unpack these findings. Um, so I hope you enjoy this and again, divide up the work among your group so that it's not too onerous and really remember that I will be giving this report to the folks running the program. So um, as you as you draw it up. All right, enjoy.